So as you might be able to guess, today's video is a Nike running shoe rotation video. And we're going to talk about how each Nike running shoe or our favorite Nike running shoes fit into how you could make a running shoe rotation to cover all bases of training, including sessions, races, easy runs, steady mileage, recovery runs. The shoes that we're about to list will fit into these categories. And also we will probably name some of our favorites and which we'd recommend if you're trying to build a smaller shoe rotation, because obviously having a lot of different shoes might not be the most cost-effective way to make a running shoe rotation. I recently saw this video on Ben Parks' YouTube channel where he went through the whole Nike running shoe lineup. And I wanted to do something quite similar and that is just not the whole running shoe lineup. It's the best of the running shoe lineup, if that makes sense. So it's gonna be what I think the best shoe is in each category, starting at recovery runs slash easy runs. And as always, comment your opinion of if you tried any of these shoes and also comment which running shoe lineup you want us to do next, whether that's a different brand or our perfect running shoe lineup, which changes every few months. Also, please make sure to subscribe because we will be starting to do giveaways for subscribers where we hopefully give away a super shoe each month for someone who is subscribed to the channel. For easy mileage, the best Nike shoe, in our opinion, is the Nike Invincible. And this is because of the high stack and cushion, as well as the full Zoomex Super Foam. For me, it is definitely the best shoe in terms of what you're going to get for recovery when you want to go on a run and just make it as easy as possible and leave the legs feeling as fresh as possible afterwards. And there isn't any other shoe that I've used, regardless of if it's Nike or not, that has come close to the Invincible. It's kind of hard to say how good it is without you trying it because it is unbelievably good. After easy mileage, the next thing in the rotation is a daily trainer. This is something that you could do your easy mileage in as well as picking up the paces and kind of it's an all encompassing shoe. So if you could only have one shoe, it would be this one, if that makes sense, because then you can do the most with it. Or at least that's the general consensus of a daily trainer. However, in this Nike lineup, I'll speak about in a bit, I may choose a different shoe if I could only have one. But the best daily trainer in Nike's lineup is the Pegasus, or more specifically, the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. And the reason why I've chosen the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature over just the standard Pegasus is because I think the Turbo Next Nature is a bit better with the Scrap Zoom X foam. Just a bit more stable, a bit more super, I guess, with the foam and it just allows you to go a bit quicker than the Pegasus does. It's light enough to be able to go faster. I've done a few sessions in this at like threshold pace, and it's also stable and comfy enough to go at slower paces. Overall, it is a bit of a flawed shoe in the sense of the upper, but I still think it's a very good shoe if you want to have it as a daily trainer. Maybe not what the previous Pegasus Turbo was used for, which was more of a session shoe. I say this is more versatile, but a little less on the speedy side. Next is threshold or tempo sessions. So that sort of so that sort of half marathon, marathon pace, or just an easier effort of a session, or maybe like a fart like session on the road predominantly. And for me, this is where I would generally wear super shoes of the Vaporfly and Alpha Fly. But I understand that not everyone would want to wear super shoes. So we also are gonna say that the tempo next percent, which is the non-racing version of the Alpha Fly, is also a good option if you want to do tempo and threshold sessions. I would wear either the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly just because of how much the Zoom X Firm saves the legs. And I mean, you can just run faster and you're more efficient and partially reduces the risk of injury because again, you're having more cushion and more leg saving benefit, which also improves recovery between sessions. So for me, I always opt for super shoes, but I understand that if you don't want to wear a racing shoe, then the Tempo Next Percent is a very good option. So again, the same applies for faster sessions. And this is where we're talking like 10K, 5K, 3K pace. Basically any session where you're not wanting to go in spikes, but it's maybe isn't as steady as let's say Tempo or even Threshold. And for me, again, super shoes do take the prime spot, especially the Vaporfly in this sense. I find myself doing a lot of my faster sessions in the Vaporfly out of all the Nike shoe lineup. But one that I've really come to love, and I think it's where its strength is rather than in a race, and that is the Nike Street Fly. It is a great, honest shoe in the sense that it is more of a traditional flat with no carbon plate. It's extremely lightweight and also the foam is soft enough so you're still getting that recovery benefit without getting as much as a push. So if you wanted something that maybe would improve your mechanics a bit more because you're essentially having to work a bit harder in terms of turning over the legs when you're doing faster stuff, then the Street Fly is a perfect shoe for that. It also can handle threshold and tempo paces, but for me at the faster end, maybe like a track workout, where you're not wearing spikes, but you want to go fast, the Street Fly is a very, very good option. And also it's much cheaper than the Super Shoes mentioned as well. So next is spike sessions, where you wanted to go race pace or just getting used to wearing spikes. And for me, the Dragonfly is the only option. It's the only one that actually feels like a road shoe in the sense of that it's got more cushion and it's just a really comfortable feel, whilst also, again, saving the legs, which I've mentioned a lot. 
But for me, saving the legs in terms of recovery and avoiding injury risk is a big thing. And the Dragonfly does that as well as being very fast. And that's why it's still the most popular super spike on the planet. There is three Nike road racing shoes which are defined as road racing shoes. That is the Streetfly, the Vapefly and the Alpha Fly. However, I would discount the street flyer over any distance because i think the vapor fly could cover the shorter distances from like 5k and 10k even a road mile and the alpha fly covers half marathon and marathon it does kind of vary what kind of runner you are if you'd wear the alpha fly from 5k and upwards or if you'd prefer the vapor fly from 5k and upwards and also as i mentioned earlier about versatile shoes and if i could only have one even though it's got a carbon plate in and a bubble i would choose the alpha fly because it feels extremely comfortable at easy paces as well so if you did only have to have one shoe I think the Alpha Fly is the best shoe ever made in terms of what it can offer for a variety of different things. But I also understand some people like a bit of a snappy eraser, and that's where the Vapor Fly comes in. And again, it's kind of personal preference. I would honestly say 5 and 10k, the Vapor Fly, and sort of the crossover for me is between 10k and half marathon or marathon for the Alpha Fly. Ultimately, it depends on how many corners the course has and how agile you need to be. The more agile you need to be, the more likelihood you need the Vaporfly over the Alphafly. And finally, we're talking about spike racing or racing on the track. And the only option really is the Nike Dragonfly. And that is because obviously I've mentioned it saves the legs whilst also being very fast. And it is much better in my opinion than the Nike Airs in Victory. A second version is coming out and we have seen it on the likes of Jakob Ingebrigtsen, Stuart McSwain, Jessica Hall and Laura Muir recently in races. But for me, even though it looks very, very nice, it doesn't quite have the same super feel or the leg saving feel as the Dragonfly does because I've noticed, even though you can sprint very fast in the airs in victory, as soon as you get tired, it becomes very unstable, which isn't only bad on the bends, but it's also bad on the straights. So I avoid this shoe just because when you get fatigued, it's really it really doesn't give you anything. Whereas it might make you faster sprint speed wise, as soon as you get tired you will run slower in the shoe. The Dragonfly is pretty much the opposite. It kind of might even slow you down a tiny bit because it's not as aggressive as most spikes on the market actually, but the way it saves the legs kind of makes up for it. Also means you can probably race more frequently because your legs aren't as battered as much after the race. And in my opinion, to make the lineup better, I would say they could potentially have a better daily trainer comparing to the likes of the A6 lineup with the Nova Blast 3 or the Saucony lineup with the endorphin speed even though the pegasus turbo is great i wouldn't feel as comfortable picking up the paces than this compared to the endorphin speed of three as i said please comment down below your opinions on any of these shoes or what your lineup would be whether that's a nike lineup or a variety of different brands also make sure you subscribe because as i said we will be doing a lot more giveaways with subscribers in in the near future thanks for watching and goodbye